Hello, and welcome to this introductory webinar on searching biopsych. My name is Peter Midford, a member of the Bioinformatics Research Group at SRI International. Overall, we have three layers of searching in biopsych. We have the basic or quick search, we have the intermediate or object-specific searches, and then we have the advanced structured query page. All the searches that we've created operate on your currently selected organism, so let's take a moment to show you ways of selecting an organism. That is the database of PGB in Biopsych. This area of the page tells us what our currently selected organism is. To select a new one, we click here to enter the organism selection dialog. It offers several ways to find an organism of interest. We can simply click on a database we've used recently, or go to a popular database. Or we can click on a letter and see all the organisms whose genus name begins with that letter, and that list is scrollable. Or we can enter any portion of an organism or strain name in this box. and then choose from those that contain the substring using, using the mouse. We'll talk about other ways to select organisms later in this webinar. In some cases, changing the organism database will take you to a page called the Organism Summary page. In other cases, you, you will want to navigate there yourself. That's under the Analysis menu your summary statistics. This summarizes uh, when the database was created by BioPsych, its taxonomic lineage, links to other, links to other databases, about the organism or genome, including phenotypic information about the organism, statistics about the genome, and other aspects of the database. It also lists which genetic uh, code the organism uses. Now that we know how to select an organism, we'll proceed to the quick search. But always keep in mind what organism is your current organism, as it's easy to get very confused if you're searching for a different organism than you're expecting. The quick search is this box here near the top of the window. Here we can type in one or more words and BioPsych will search for those words against the number of objects in the current database. Notice that this text that just came up when we moved our mouse into that area tells us all the kinds of types of words we might enter, which includes object names or synonyms thereof, full or partial EC numbers or INCHI keys, BioPsych identifiers, identifiers from external databases such as Uniprot, and gene locus identifiers. Now, let's type threonine and click the button here. The results are summarized into categories according to the type of object our search matches. So you can see our search matched six pathways, 12 proteins, 23 metabolites, and three reactions. We can click on these tabs to go to a given grouping, such as the list of matching metabolites, and we can click on any item in the list to go to the object page for that entry. For example, I could say, of course, I was looking for threonine synthetase, which is up in the protein area. And I could click on that protein, but if I was interested in the pathway threonine biosynthesis, which is up here, I could click on that. And note that all these pages we could click through are in the Flaviobacterium frigidarium database. Now, generally, the quick search searches the name and synonyms of an object in the PGDB. If you want to enter more than one word, then a given object name must contain all the words you enter. And now, let's just click on the pathway to show you going through that page. Quick search is very fast and easy to use. The main problem with quick searches is that they lack specificity. They can give us too many results. Often, by specifying more about what we are looking for, we can find what we are looking for more quickly. Thus, our other search types that are found under the search section of the main tools menu. Let's now enter the gene RNA protein search tool. 
This tool allows us to search for genes or proteins according to many possible criteria which we can combine. Most well, simply, we can generate a list of all genes, polypeptides, protein complexes, or RNAs by clicking on these buttons. So here's a list of all the RNAs in this database. And we can see both the RNA and their associated gene. We can use these to change the sorting. So if we want to see a descending or ascending list based on the gene identifier, we can do it that way. And then we can click through to the RNA page, for example, starting here. Let's go back to the gene search. We can also begin, for example, by typing HEM in the gene name area, and it will tell us all the possible completions which we could select. Or we can clear that area and type THR down in the protein name field and see proteins and database identifiers, and it will tell us all the possible completions, which we can then select and submit our query for that name. And because there's only one result selected, it goes straight to the result page. Now let's go back to the search page, and we're going to examine some of the other filter criteria. But first, we're going to switch back to the E. coli database because E. coli has data in many of these additional fields that the other genome does not. these criteria. Let's look at this first filter criteria. Imagine that we want to search for small proteins within this organism. We can do so by opening the sequence length filter and entering our range of interest. Let's say we want to enter our length in amino acids. Let's say we want all the proteins that have a sequence length less than 100 amino acids. We then enter our query, proteins in E. coli. We actually get quite a few proteins in there, and their lengths are shown over on the right side here. And we can sort them by length if we want an ascending list. We want to see the shortest ones in length. And note that uh, some of the smallest one, among the smallest ones are a number of liter peptides. Now let's go back to the search page. And some of the other filter criteria are for genes we can now, some of the other filter criteria are for genes we can find by re what replicon they're on and their map position on the replicon by using this filter. We can also search by the molecular weight of the gene product, by types of the subunits, for example, selecting only genes that have only RNA products, or only monomers, or only homo multimers as their product. Close that. We can also search for gene products according to their PI. We can also search for gene products according to small molecule ligands that are act as activators or inhibitors or cofactors. So if we want to search for all the proteins that have recorded cofactors, of pyridoxal phosphatate. We can select that, submit our query, and there's the result. Now let's go back and close that up. We can also search by evidence code. We can search by, for example, genes that have experimental evidence for their functions. We can search for genes by the cellular location of their gene products. So we could search for all genes that are present in the paraplasmic space by expanding the space region and then selecting paraplasm. We can also search for all proteins that are annotated with given gene ontology terms or multifund terms. We can search for all genes that are database sites given a PubMed ID or a publication by a given author or with given words in the title. We can also search for all proteins that have a given type of protein feature annotated, such as a calcium binding site or 
or other metal binding sites. Now to combine these criteria, we simply enter information in more than one expanded filter at a time. So if we want to find proteins that are both metal ion binding and that are present in the periplasm, we would open both of these simultaneously. Note that the only active filters when you submit your query are those that are actually open. If a filter is collapsed or closed down, it's not actually used in the query. The selection at the top isn't a criterion, but a way to extend our search across more than our current database. If we open that line, we get a special organism chooser that lets you specify organisms one at a time. And add them to the list on the right side. You can select up to 70 organisms. I'll add a couple of E. coli strains to extend the search. I've now added a uh, research strain B, E. coli B and a pathogenic strain O157. Now we'll use a simple uh, search criteria for this. We'll just search for proteins and genes by the EC number of the reaction they catalyze. So we'll enter an EC number here and click Submit. And what we get is a column that lists first the organism, the gene name that uh, Produces a product that has that catalyzes a particular EC number and the list of EC numbers. And it lists that the O157 strain is not known to produce an enzyme with, that catalyzes that kind of reaction. Now there are other object-specific searches under the search section of the main tools menu, such as reaction search. We'll cover those in the webinar for that object type. So the reaction searches will be covered in the reaction webinar. We also have a pair of webinars covering the most advanced search tool, which is this advanced search. We'll take a few more minutes to look at some of the other options under the search menu, such as the Google search this, of this site option. Here, we simply enter a search term, such as tryptophan, one or more terms, click Google search, and we'll search on all pages within the Biopsych site. You can use all your favorite Google syntax here, and the advantage of this search is that it will search all the available fields of the database, including the many review summaries that we have available. Let's go back. There's also a cross-organism search, which is different from the multi-organism search in the gene search page. It searches for terms across multiple databases rather than criteria for specific fields. But because it's a term search, you can search against many kinds of objects at once. For example, if I want to look for objects that have both tyrosine and oxidase, in either their names or their summary, across a set of organisms, And here I get these two from E. coli K12. Now the full text search only works for E. coli because we only have articles available for E. coli, but what it allows you to do is search our E. coli corpus of 38,000 articles and full text papers and nearly 46,000 abstracts using a tool called Textpresso. Now also above the Google search option are our BLAST searches, which you will cover in the next webinar, the Genes and Genomes webinar. I'd like to wrap up this webinar by going back to the Organism Selection dialog and showing you what some of the other tabs can do for you. This tab, the Taxonomy tab, allows us to select an organism from a taxonomy by drilling down through the taxonomy. For example, we can open the Archaea, then the Uri Archaeota, then the Thermococci, Thermococci AC, Pyrococcus, and Pyrococcus abyssi. And we can select this genome by clicking on it and clicking OK. We can also select an organism by its phenotypic properties by selecting this tab. 
First, we select a property that we're interested in. There's a whole list of available properties. Let's select collection date. Then we select the relationship we're interested in. So we're looking for a collection date that is, rather than is not, uh, or is simply specified. And we'll use the approximately equals operator, although we have a list of the standard comparisons. And I will enter 2014. I can then click Find Organism. And I find that there are 637 uh, organisms that have a collection date of 2014. And I could just select them from the list and choose it as my organism of interest. Another query we can do is to find organisms with a given human microbiome body site. We select human microbiome body site. And let's click here to see possible values. For example, we can find those that have a possible value of skin. Or bone. Or we could remove bone and replace it with blood. And click to find organisms. We can also change the query again to find organisms that have a particular temperature range. Select temperature range. Our list of options. We'll take this to the sacrophiles. And there's our friend Flavobacterium. Finally, if you're interested in metabolic models, here's a tab that shows uh, the list of organisms that have available metabolic models. Thank you for listening to this webinar. The next one in the series will talk about uh, genomes and browsing and sequences.